guys, and welcome to Katie's Insight, where I give my insight on all kinds of things, including news, business, finance, politics, and most importantly right now, stimulus and the election. Like I said before, things are going to get weird and they're going to continue to get weird. And we've been seeing little bits of signs of weird in the last videos that I have done. But today I really want to focus on some people who are stepping up to talk about the situation with stimulus, some people in our government who are actually trying to help. And we heard from drunk, quivering, good Sunday morning, Nance Pelosi. Apparently, I completely missed a press conference she had, where have I been, in technical issue land. So we're going to also go over that because she does a little bit respond to some things. And we catch her in another lie. I, I My favorite days are catching Nance and lie days. Drunk Nancy catching her in lies. But before we get into all that, guys, if you could do me a big favor and give this video a big like to help this channel out, like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet, hit notifications so you can notify what's coming on the pipeline for you and your stimulus money, sound off in the comments on whatever you want. You can even do it throughout the video. I love seeing multiple comments from people. And please share this content with anybody you think is struggling right now could help. People who are on unemployment, waiting for unemployment, stimulus checks, SB loan and grant issues, bill issues, everything in between. I got tons of tools and tons of resources to help everybody during this difficult time, and I would love nothing more than to do that. Also, guys, for everybody who likes, subscribes, hit notifications, comments, shares the content, you're entered to win a $100 gift card. So <clears throat> make sure you do that for every single video you see. The more comments you leave, the higher the chance that you're going to win a gift card. So if you leave 100 comments, 100 times more chance, you'll win a $100 gift card. Good luck. Find me on Facebook, Katie's Insight. Join the page, Katie's Corner. We we'll changed to Katie's Insight soon. Go in there, ask stimulus questions. We're helping you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Get stimulus help in your specific areas. And it's for free. We're just all helping each other because who can pay for anything right now? Also, before we begin, guys, I know it's a little bit chilly, but it's a little nicer today. So it's like, I feel like flowers. So I put a bunch of flower body spray on and I threw this on. So heads up, as you guys know, and I am so grateful to be able to say this, I'm continuing to shrink. Thank goodness. Going from 300 pounds to 145 about where I'm at, I say this is such a blessing. You know, some people are just kind of like, they kind of complain about good things. Like, oh, my clothes don't fit. It's so annoying. I'm getting so thin. No, I'm like, oh my goodness. I get to look like a person again. It's wonderful. No disrespect to anybody's bodies. And I had medical issues. It looked like somebody just put an air tire up my butt in blue, like no joke. And that's not me making fun of anybody else. I'm saying I had water retention, I had liver issues. I didn't look right. I wasn't just fat, I didn't look right. So I'm just so excited to be able to have my body in a comfortable place. But my whole point is, ladies, you understand exactly what I'm about to tell you. I'm in between sizes right now with bras and with clothing. Does that make any sense? And I talked about this a little bit. That's why I've gone, when I say a shopping spree, I bought like five tops that were between five, 10 or $15. Uh, try, I try to stick between the five to 10 range. No matter how much money I have, I'm a super bargain shopper. Like I get off on that. I love it. I'm like Mama June coupon. I can't say Mama June coupon in the store. She's not the best person to probably reference at this point. Um, if you guys have ever seen any of those episodes where she just starts making all these crazy faces as she's couponing. I'm not quite that bad, but I'll have, I'll have like wish lists of things for like five years of stuff I want to buy and hoping that it still stays within specific retailers and if this retailer doesn't have it, which one does and price compares. I'm nuts. I'm weird when it comes to this stuff, but I love it. Clothing is art. Body spray is art. To me, these things are art and it just makes me so happy. As, I feel like as women, we're put down for certain things like fashion and perfume and things. It's almost looked at as, as shallow. When I look at it as I'm like, no, I think women are just more attuned to the fact that we are natural artists. But that's also a society thing. Women have allowed to kind of have that aspect of themselves to be artistic. And, and men, it's not that you can't, but it's not as is pushed. Just like for women, we're not as pushed to be assertive. Men aren't, they're not really necessarily trained to be nice. Women are trained to be nice from birth. Men are trained to be gentlemen towards women, but assent, but they're also trained to be assertive and aggressive in other areas. It's so weird how we treat the different uh, sexes. And I'm not, there's some things I understand. We're biologically different, right? And now some, some women are different and some men are different where they don't fit into those norms. And that's totally fine. You do you. Again, it's just weird. My whole point is to say in this art form today, my clothing is shrinking. And as a result, I've noticed in a couple of videos, my neckline is getting lower and lower. And so it's plunging. Please understand it's not intentional. This is because I don't know what the H-E-L-L -L I'm doing yet in these in-between sizes. So if you guys start to see it, just like yell shirt alert, <laughs> shirt alert in the comments and let me know uh, because also I'm not gonna watch. I, I, 
I have such a bad eye for detail. I do videos. I should, I should be focused on this stuff, but y'all are just the best audience. And you guys, it's so funny. A lot of audiences on YouTube get hyper-focused on tiny details. You guys are just so awesome and so kind to me and so happy to have me, which I'm not used to. But I'm just saying, if you see it, it is not intentional. I'm not trying to make a statement or get attention. I'm trying to figure out how my clothing fits. Okay, so let's get into this. So where are we at with stimulus? As I've said, it's our big fat nothing burger day, week, month, literally year since about March. Nothing much is happening. So we have Steve Mnuchin and we have Mitch McConnell who are now stepping up to the plate and they are trying to get something passed with stimulus. Now I do wanna go over this cause I thought this was interesting. There's a rumor that uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin is fired and that he's leaving the Treasury. That is not true and it might be true. So I wanna go into that for just a minute. I thought about making a separate video about this, but because I know this stuff can get kind of confusing, but, um, and, and I'll say it, meet Kevin. And by the way, I am such a huge fan. Meet Kevin was the person that inspired me to come on and do these videos. I think, I think he and his whole family or his wife is so pretty, his cute little kids. Like I just, I think he's fantastic. But he put out a video um, where he said Steve Mnuchin leaving the treasury and it was said fired and stuff. Now here's the thing. Me as a YouTuber and being on YouTube, I understand something that a lot, that maybe a lot of people in this field or in this certain type of field I'm gonna talk about don't. Um, this is all a marketing and advertising game on YouTube, right? So like for instance, if you look at my thumbnails, look at my titles, and this is across the board with YouTubers, they're gonna have to be attention getting. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to find any share of an audience that will end up, you know, showing your content to the advertiser, you know, advertisers, um, showing the the ads to advertisers, getting that out there, and that's how we make money. So I'm not knocking him because I know a lot of people. Well, this is the thing when he was first coming up in March, but this is when kind of everybody was coming up, right? Because no, but like this was all this. There wasn't stimulus news before this. This was brand new. A lot of people kind of came down him and they called him the clickbait, clickbait Kevin, and it really bothered me because I was like, no, he's just really good at marketing and promotions, and you have to be. You have to be. It's like people don't get mad if you go to Carl's Jr. and the burger that you're eating doesn't look like the amazing burger on the commercial. You don't see Paris Hilton there eating it. Hey, Paris, hey. I really like her. Um, I and again, it's one of those things where people perceive her one way, but she's she's not at all what you think she is. There are a lot of women like that. Jessica Simpson, Paris Hilton, they kind of have this image of these portrayed, you know, like um, bobble-headed or empty-headed uh, uh, Barbie dolls. And it's not true at all. They're very, very intelligent women. Um, they're just very artistic women and they love their artistry. I think, and, and that's what I see is like fashion, clothing, perfume. Again, I just think that it's a society. There are certain things we don't value and there are certain things we don't like we don't break down. So for instance, being happily, happy and bubbly and hyper and liking fashion and, and all of that, like that's all looked at as a very certain paradigm when it's like, it's art. It's somebody, it's just appreciating art. And that's, now you don't want to make that your whole life to where it becomes destructive, but that's anything. It's just balance, right? And I think people just don't think about it that way because we don't ever speak in literal context about things. We speak in buzzwords or buzz phrases or these weird assumptions that turn into these cultural societal norms that nobody even understands. It's how like in the 90s, you could kind of get away with doing anything mean and being like, it's the 90s. You know what I mean? Like you can have these catchphrases that are just kind of excuses for everything, but nobody sits in like really thinks about what it means. But also that phrase, it's the 90s, you know, that had a lot of good connotation too, because that was like where the LGBT movement was coming into the forefront as being more accepted, which thank goodness for that, because all people deserve love. Where am I going with this? Steve Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin. So Kevin put out a video saying he was fired and I looked into it and I'm like, he's not, Kevin, he's not fired. But again, I get it, exaggerated titles, no disrespect. And also remember he's in real estate. So he knows the marketing and sales and advertising game and more power to him. So here's what he's referring to that I thought I would go over. If you're gonna say that Steve Mnuchin is fired, right? Here's how we have to look at it. Then that means everybody is fired in the White House. Because if Biden goes into office, I say if because I still think a lot of weird stuff's coming. Not because I want it, not because I think it should happen. I'm just telling you what I see just from the common sense perspective of how I try to look at things. Um, I think Trump has a lot more judicial ammunition than what he's letting on, which is part of why he's so quiet. That's just my opinion. Um, when a new president comes in, typically 
they get rid of the majority of the people and they put their own cabinets in. So guys, if you hear things about like, and that's the other thing, if you hear hit pieces from the news, because the news has been doing tons of hit pieces on Mnuchin right now. Steve Mnuchin, fire! Well, they're all fired. So basically, Biden doesn't want to bring Steve Mnuchin there. He wants to bring in Janet Yellen. And Janet Yellen was a Fed chair for a while. Um, and I, you know, I need to dive more into her, but I can tell you from studying this stuff over the last year, she has been very vocal and very pro-stimulus help. So I think that's a very good sign. So I'll have to, again, I'm going to have to wait. I really want to dive into her before I really give too many opinions on it, but I'm just happy that she's been very pro-stimulus. But then there was another one, I forget who it is, but there was another former uh, Fed chair who was also screaming stimulus help. So, uh, I mean, I don't think anybody's going to be mad at that. You know, the more help we can get, the better, I think. Um, but Steve Mnuchin and Mitch McConnell are now trying to do a deal because Steve Mnuchin, as you guys know, as I've been detailing, took back $454 billion from the Treasury, half trillion took that back to give to the Congress to reallocate, which Nancy talks about in here. And she does a cute little lie. I love Nancy lies. It just makes me giggle. Like watching this woman in action makes me giggle. So they took that money. They're going to try to repurpose it for the next stimulus bill. However, how far can Steve Mnuchin get in any negotiations if he's not coming back? That's a question I haven't really looked at. And that's a question we haven't really dove into so and i'm also wondering if steve mnuchin leaves does that mean janet yellen is going to be behind the scenes trying to do these negotiations because what we've been hearing is we've been hearing joe biden has met with schumer and pelosi so far as we're aware biden hasn't met with the republicans so biden and also he's told nancy me casa you casa remember the cringeworthy video i did yesterday ah old white rich awkward people talking in Spanish and other languages. It just makes me, it makes me cringe, y'all. And it's not because I'm a super social justice warrior. It's because I don't like these people because they're not nice to us. That's it. You know what? We can all be awkward, okay? I'm not worried about that, especially, oh Lord, especially white people. We've been in many ways taught not to feel, you know? So it's that, that comes with the territory of some of this Caucasianness at times. But um, where was I going with this? I just keep making weird random jokes, but okay. So that's really where we're at with stimulus. We have both sides. We have the Republicans and the Democrats saying we would like to pass something in the lame duck session, which is right now. It's that in-between period between presidents going in and out or another one staying. It's highly unlikely. And it's because I think the Democrats don't want anything to happen until Biden is in office. And Nancy today proves my point even more. I'm going to do a whole video breaking down what I saw from this because I don't know. It's she's just it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I don't know. Like, I feel like the true definition of, um, ah, I'm not going to get into it, but I just, I'll put it this way. I love seeing a Nancy in the wild. I, that's how I'll put it. Cause I'm trying not to be too mean at the same time. I'm like, I kind of don't really care if I'm a little bit offensive with you because of how absolutely offensive you've been to the lives of the American people. So I want to dive into this though, because we have the problem solvers caucus. They're speaking out. They're mad. It's not too, too long, but I do want to go over this because guys, the problem solvers caucus, they had a bill. I think it was like in late August, early September that came out and they were trying to help with stimulus. And it's a pretty decent bill, guys. We have more than one round of stimulus checks, automatic stabilizers, help for unemployment, rent. They even give money for the EIDL, the PPP. It's a pretty decent bill at a pretty decent size. And of course, because of that, both sides crapped all over it because we have to play politics with our lives and they have to benefit from the money, not us, guys, because that's always how it works. But the Problem Solvers Caucus is a group of government officials, so congressmen, senators, representatives, and they've come together and they try to get legislation done and passed to help everybody from all sides. So the two main leaders had an interview that I want to go over, and then we're going to get into the most fun, as you guys know, my favorite, where I get excited, Nance. So let's take a look and see what the Problem Solvers Caucus has to say. Joining me now, co-chairs of the Problem Solvers Caucus, New York Congressman Tom Reed, New Jersey Congressman Josh Gottheimer. Good to see both of you, Congressman. Josh, to you first. When will we get more stimulus? Is that, again, now that a lot of these areas of the country are grappling with rising infections and even deaths, there's, a, there's going to be an even greater need for aid, whether it's small businesses and extension of the unemployment benefits. When will that happen if that will happen? Well, I'm hoping, and I know uh, Tom and I, as, as co-chair of the Problem Solvers Caucus, feel deeply that it's critical that we get this done in the next weeks before 
uh, obviously the holidays. It's it's a very tough time right now. If you if you point out, look at the map with cases skyrocketing everywhere. We had the highest caseload here in New Jersey uh, at 4,600 since uh, the pandemic began. So everyone has to take action here. And that means how House Democrats and Republicans and the senators are going to have to sit down and leadership at the table and get this done. And uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't say this stronger, that we've been working on this for months, that now is the time to get stimulus. Now is the time to help folks who are families who are struggling and, and help the food insecure. As you know, so many people are hungry right now. Now is the time to get this done. Uh, Maria spoke with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy about if Congress can reach a new be, uh, bill during the lame duck session. Here's what he said, and then, Tom, I'll get your reaction. Do you expect anything this year during the lame duck session? Should we expect more stimulus coming? Well, the American public should expect it out of their elected officials. There are 23 Democrats who signed a letter in September who said they would sign the discharge petition if they had no recourse with Nancy's actions. Well, now is the time. I'm right here in D.C. today. If they signed it, we could get it out in one day. That's the difference. We are ready to act, willing to act, and willing to work with anybody. We just have a speaker who believes nothing is more important than something. Uh, Congressman Tom Reed, your reaction to that, and then I'll let Josh yeah, respond. What, yeah, what Kevin's talking about is $130 billion of the Paycheck Protection Program, and that would be something which is better than nothing, and that may be something we have to uh, consider, and I'll defer to Josh whether uh, they'll move forward with that, but I think we need more than that. I think what we need to work with Kevin as well as others in the Senate, which we are already doing in the Problem Solvers Caucus, talking to our partners. Uh, there's essentially about eight senators that we're working with on a regular basis. And you know, we, we've got these guys back to the table, our leadership, both on the Democrat Republican side with Mitch McConnell and uh, with Mark Meadows and the, and the White House. And we've been talking to the administrative officials. Remember, President Trump has to sign this legislation. And we were assured just uh, 72 hours ago that I was talking with White House officials that if we can do a package, it's not gonna be a $2 trillion package. That, that ship has sailed, that is gone. What we need to do is focus on what is attainable. And that is a package somewhere in between 500 billion and a trillion dollars, somewhere in that range. Let's do what's necessary for the American people and for American businesses and individuals. And that is a package that the president will sign. That is a key critical piece of information I'm delivering this morning. The president will sign this if these guys get out of the way and leadership stops playing politics. It was presidential politics before. Now it's a race in Georgia that is uh, distracting everybody or making them put politics over people. It's time to put people first and get this deal done. Uh, Congressman Gottheimer, that one, it's a $135 billion in unused paycheck protection money. Uh, that uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was actually asked about that on Friday, about the possibility of releasing it, and she said that's up to the administration. No, it's not. It's up to Congress. Well, I, they have to reallocate it. So what was she talking about? Uh, I didn't hear that, but I'll tell you what I know is that, and, and, this is what, and I agree with Tom, now's the time to get back to the table. And if Kevin McCarthy wants to join us at the table and, and figure out a package that we've got Democrats and Republicans agreeing to, and we know the administration will be there, and we know we've got a group of senators, bipartisan, uh, also eager to get something done, as Tom said, that covers these areas that we've been focusing on now for months, we can get this done. And so now, I, you, know, I, I, you know, what I think is critical, and we've said this to leadership on both sides, is the, and the administration, let's get back to the table, let's do it this week, let's find an agreement, it's there, let's put aside all the politics and help folks. No more, you know, we've got to really, really stand by Americans right now and small businesses and families, and obviously take, make sure that our schools have what they need as we go through a very, very tough winter and the testing is ready. So to me, there is a, a there's agreement, you've got Democrats and Republicans agreeing on a package. We know what we can get across the finish line, but it's a matter of both sides stopping the games and actually getting something done. And I know that's something we've stressed to leadership, my leadership, I've stressed that. I know Tom has done the same, and now it's time to get it done. Tom, would an extension of the unemployment benefits, again, that extra 13 weeks provided by the federal government of unemployment benefits, that ends uh, at the end of the year. Also, the expansion that, say, um, contract workers, freelancers, and people uh, would be able to also collect unemployment benefits through a federal program. Would those be two critical parts of a new stimulus package? That's the frustrating little secret of Washington, D.C. When you focus on the policy, there's broad bipartisan support for things like that. 
And, and you're not going to get the $600 amount. Everybody knows that ship is gone. That is a lesson taught, a lesson learned. What we need to do is make sure that you have relief, but you don't get more money uh, not working than you do when you're working. And it's caused a ripple effect that's damaging uh, getting people back to work and having businesses get the employees that they need in, in back into employment. So there's a solution there, and we know what it is. And people have widely vetted it. So that would be a critical piece, but you also got to get the Paycheck Protection Program. You also need some assistance for food assistance. You need some food uh, housing assistance. The package, the contours of it are not hard. It's getting the politics out of the way and tell leadership, stop playing games. Enough is enough, put people first, not politics. And if you do your job, real leaders will emerge and you let the politics get out of the room. I will leave it at that. Congressman Reed, Congressman Gottheimer, good to see you both. Have a safe and blessed Thanksgiving, both of you. Okay, guys, I don't have a transcript, but I did type up a little bit of what they were talking about because I do want to comment. Again, it's not you guys saw it. It's just not super long, but I do want to go over this. So let's dive in. So this is from, so the people that showed up, the two that you're going to hear talking are Tom Reed and Josh Gottenheimer. So just to hear the words Reed or Gottenheimer, that's what they're referring to. Also, guys, um, if I have to type up kind of loose, when I do transcripts myself, they are very loose based. Some of it I just kind of, you know, because sometimes somebody will take 10 or 20 seconds to kind of put a phrase together. So I leave some of that stuff out. Or if it seems like I'm stumbling over my words, it's probably because I type something stupid because I do this very quickly. You guys know I talk quickly. I can also type quickly. I can double speed and just type. I know it's weird, um, but this is just my wheelhouse. I always tell people, I'm like filming videos for me and talking on camera, it's autopilot. I can be sitting and processing and analyzing several different things while I'm talking to you guys and you have no idea because this is just like second, third nature for me. Uh, but don't get me doing math, I'll cry. <laughs> okay, here we go. So the woman asked Josh, when will we get more stimulus? Now that a lot of these areas are grappling with rising infections and deaths, there will be greater need for PPP and unemployment. When will this happen if it will happen? He says, we are hoping it happens. We feel it's critical to get it done in the next few weeks before the holidays. Well, I mean, the holidays is this week, but I think he means in total, like the totality of the holiday months, which I've said, you know, November and December, at least end of November. It's a very touched time right now. Um, we have the highest caseload in New Jersey we've ever had at 4,600 since the pandemic began. Everyone has to take action here. House Democrats and Republicans and senators have to sit down at the table and get things done. I could not say this stronger. We've been working on this for months. Now's the time to get stimulus. Now's the time to help struggling families, the food insecure. Now's the time to get it done. And it says House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is talking about if we can get a deal done during the lame deck section. And now to this guy, Kevin McCarthy, another interviewer asks, should we expect more stimulus coming with the lame duck? He says the American public should expect it out of their congressmen. 23 Democrats who signed a letter in September that said they would sing the dis they sorry they'd sign there it is there's my type and they would sing the discharge papers they would sign the discharge papers um petition if they have no recourse with nancy's actions i'm in dc today if they signed it we could get it done in one day we are ready and we are willing to act and willing to work with anybody but our speaker believes that nothing is more important than something talking about nancy pelosi nancy's like well we need all or nothing. And instead of giving a little something, we're going to do nothing. And that's why, again, I'm just so mad at her. I'm mad at all of them. It's specifically her. So it says Tom. So Tom Reed. That Now the interview is saying, uh, Tom Reed, your reaction to that. He says, what Kevin's talking about is the $130 billion from the PPP, which would be something, which is better than nothing. And it may be something we need to consider right now. But we need more than that. We need to talk to our partners and work with senators on a regular basis. We keep bringing these people to talk on all sides, Mark Meadows, Mitch McConnell, and the White House. We've been talking to the White House administration officials. Remember, Trump has to sign this legislation. And 72 hours ago, I was talking to the White House. And if we can get a package done, it won't be $2 trillion. That ship has sailed and gone. We need to focus on the attainable $500 to $1 trillion uh, package. Let's do a package that will help the people and do what's necessary for individuals and businesses. That's a package the president will sign. He will sign it if these guys get out of the way and stop playing politics. They've been playing presidential politics and now it's a race, the runoff race in Georgia. Time to put people first and get this done. I feel like golf claps all around. I think we can all agree. Something I find interesting, and we've heard this a lot, and Trump has said this. Trump has said they want, you know, trillions of dollars to bail out things that have nothing to do with stimulus. And considering they Democrats want $3.4 for only one round of stimulus checks, I think is offensive. 
It's offensive to us. So they are calling out what Trump has said. Put a bill in front of me that's very specific to help the American people, and I will get something done. But then at the same time, if Trump only has about two-ish more months in office, is that even going to happen? And that's the hard part is because we don't fully know yet what is going to happen when it comes to the presidency. So, um, and then it says... Gottenheimer, it's 130 billion in the PPP. That's then the guys, that's that money we've talked about, that leftover money in the Paycheck Protection Program fund that's just sitting there not being used. It says Nancy Pelosi asked about it on Friday. They somebody asked her about it, and she said that money and how it's used is up to the White House administration. But it's not. It's up to Congress. What's she talking about? We're gonna go into it in a minute. I'm almost done. But here's what he says. He says, I don't know what she's talking about. That's a very polite way of calling her crap. Now is the time to get it back to the table. If McCarthy wants to get it on the table, Democrats, the administrators, Republicans, and our bipartisan group is eager to get something done in targeted areas. We can get something done. What I think is critical on both sides and the administration, let's get back to the table and get something done this week. Let's make an agreement. Put aside politics and help people. We have to stand by families, businesses, and make sure our schools have what they need during the tough winter and testing available. We have Democrats and Republicans agreeing on a package um, with what uh, we know we can get across the finish line. But it's a matter of both sides uh, stopping and getting something done, stopping the fighting, getting something done. We've stressed it to both of our leaderships, and now we have to continue to stress it to leadership. It's time to get something done. Last one. Somebody says, would extending unemployment and the 13 extra weeks of unemployment, that EB, the extended benefits, at the end of the year, also, uh, should we get that done? Also, the expansion that says the PUA, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance for Gig Workers, Rideshare Drivers, uh, Small Businesses, is ending. Would those two be critical parts of a new stimulus package? And then he says this. He says, that's the frustrating little secret in D.C. When you focus on a policy, these broad bipartisan supports for things like that, we would get 600. Well, that ship has sailed and gone. Lesson learned. We need to get people relief, but not more for working, not more for staying home than working. It caused a ripple effect that's damaged people getting back to work and put employees and getting employees what they need to get back to work. There's a solution and we know what it is. People have widely vetted it. That's a critical piece, but we need help for the PPP, food, housing. Um, we, we can do this. It's not that hard. Then he actually curses. If you guys see a jump cut, I had to cut it out. Not because I'm anti-cursing. I'm all for cursing because YouTube isn't. It says, uh, I'll show you. It says, I'll read it to you. It's getting these blank politicians. Kind of think about like when a beaver and they build something. What do beavers build? It's about getting these beaver politics out. Now all, oh, because it's all the euphemism for something else. Out of the way and telling leadership. Now I just see beavers in my head. Ah, to stop playing games. And if they do their jobs, real leaders will emerge and let politics get out of the room. Y'all, my head is full of really weird things right now. Stop it, Brent. Don't you hate that? And then it just goes on loop. Or you know what I really hate? And this has happened a couple times. So my boyfriend has just sang a couple really annoying songs this whole week. And I'll have little bits and pieces of on loop. So for instance, like y'all know, okay, Justin Bieber. I'm not... I'm not anti-Justin Bieber, but I'm not really a fan. No disrespect, just his music's not really for me. But remember that song where he kind of like was half rap and he's like, if I watch a bot, I'll never let you go. You know what I'm talking about? But all of a sudden in the song, he starts going, swag, swag, swag. So he's saying swag really weird. I've had that swag phrase in repeat in my head. Again, talk about weird white awkwardness going on in here. Talking about swagging beavers and quivers and whatnot. Lord have mercy. But I wanted to go over this, and I also thought it was really interesting. This gives us kind of an insight. He said that $600 a week stimulus, that ship has sailed. They said that ship has sailed. They also said getting a very big package done, that ship has sailed. So it looks like he's kind of giving us some insight that over on Capitol Hill and over in the Congress, they aren't really all about that. Now, we knew the Republicans really didn't want to do 600 a week stimulus. Um, we knew they wanted to come down with it. But the fact that he said that sailed and that's not going to happen, it makes me wonder if Nancy Pelosi has overplayed her hand in trying to screw us over. You know, it's uh, it's an interesting concept. So this is kind of, these are a couple things that I'm looking at. Now, when it comes to Biden, and this is something interesting, there are rumors going on that even though publicly he is saying, oh, let's do a big old package and me casa, you casa, Nancy, he's doing all of this. 
But privately, he and his people are telling reporters, look, we want to do some small targeted relief immediately, that that's going to be something big for him. But then in the news, I keep seeing how like he's going to make sure he's going to really fix climate change and be energy efficient during a time where nobody can actually pay their utility bill and might not have lights, electricity or Internet. I don't know. It's super, super offensive. But. Um, I'm not saying wanting to do good things for the environment is offensive. That's obviously a good thing, but I think that there are priorities right now. But again, all these people, I think they have their priorities and their morals just completely screwed up and we're always in the center of it, unfortunately. But looking at this and trying to weigh this information, I do think it's going to be interesting coming up exactly what happens, which way Biden is going to lean. I have a feeling Biden is going to end up being somebody who kind of just sways with wherever the change is going a little bit. I don't know. And, and I don't know that, right? I could be totally wrong. We'll have to wait and see. And we'll also have to see if he actually gets into office because you guys know there's huge discrepancy with that situation as it is. Like, is that even going to happen? But now, hold on, I have an itch. By the way, y'all freaked me out the other day. I had an itch and you guys were like, well, you just bought something at, a, at an outlet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, discount Victoria's Secret outlet. So uh, you guys got me uh, paranoid that maybe I've got bugs. So yeah, I went and just like, washed everything a few times in really hot water and a lot of soap. But no, like this happens. I just get so in, in trying to fix the issues I have, like I'll do some videos kind of educating people on this, the histamine disorder, which I'm slowly getting fixed. Like I said, I couldn't wear any types of body spray for about a few years without having extreme asthmatic reactions and getting in the shower immediately and having to get it off. And now I can wear it all day, every day, which is wonderful. But part of in fixing that, I'm going to have some of it flare up. And one of it is just like super itchy skin, especially on my back. Ah, it doesn't really help. It just makes it worse. But, or maybe I have bugs, right? I got bugs. Who knows? I got worms. Who knows? But here's the next thing that I wanted to kind of go over and show you guys. So apparently Nance Pelosi spoke up and she told everybody that the White House is in charge of that PPP money. I found it too. I found the press conference I didn't see. I found the clip. Let's play it and let's giggle. Tell us, Nance. Tell us what's going on, Nasty Nance. Give us your quivers. Yes, sir. Yes, Madam Speaker, as you mentioned, businesses are hurting out there, and still yes. there's about $138 million that's allocated in PPP funds that's there, ready yeah. available. It, any, any possibility on releasing some of that money? Well, that's up to the administration, and that's why we're saying, um, what is this? And a plus all the other money that Mr. Mnuchin uh, has discretion over, that's for bigger business, but nonetheless, as the uh, Fed has said, so much a part of, of, our, uh, of our economy. Uh, that, that, uh, uh, it, it's really, that's, why, that's why I referenced Sandy Hook. Forget about it. That's why I referenced George Floyd. Let's just move on. People are suffering, and uh, if you don't believe in governance, then it's hard. That it's easy for you to say we don't really have to do all of these things, and that's what the problem is. But I'm optimistic that we will have bipartisanship to put something together to go forward, uh, because I do believe that many of our colleagues understand what's happening in their districts and to want to make a difference. There's just one big obstacle in the way. In the Senate, it's Mitch McConnell, but the other obstacle, because he does what uh, President Trump says, and that's President Trump. Yes, yes, sir. Speaker, yes, sir. Speaker, as far as those negotiations go right now, yes, who are these active negotiations going on with? Is it House Democrats and Leader McConnell? Is no, the White House involved? No. When's the last no, time you spoke no, with, with that's the not Secretary of uh, the, the Yesterday, there was a meeting of, of the um, staff the, of the four corners. That would be the House and Senate, Democrat and Republican leaders. The, the anticipation was that it was really about the uh, the omnibus. You have, remember, we have to have an omnibus bill. We must keep government open. That's a, uh, the, uh, a very important responsibility during the lame duck. Uh, we don't want another continuing resolution. I don't think they do either. So we have an expression yesterday was for the, the staffs to deal with what we call the ash and trash. You know, just some of the uh, things that are not up here, but need to be resolved so that we can move forward. And that hopefully we would have been able to begin 
a path to the COVID. That didn't happen, but hopefully it will. But who do you need to engage with? Excuse me? My house is it Leader McConnell. No, these were the four leaders. Four leaders. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. I'm going to dissect this all. You guys know me. I love to break things down and dissect it more thoroughly in another video, probably the next day or two. So stay tuned for that. But I wanted to tack this on here because I've not been for the Problem Solvers Caucus in this interview. I wouldn't have, for some reason, I just completely missed this interview. So I wouldn't have been able to see this. So I want to go over just this part. So somebody says, Madam Speaker, as you mentioned, businesses are being heard out there. She says, yes. He says, and still there's about 138 million that's allocated in PPP funds that's there, ready, available. Any possibility on releasing some of that money? Pelosi says, well, that's up to the administration. And that's what we're saying. And that's why we're saying, what is this? Let's go over that again, because she seemed lost when she said this. Well, that's up to the administration. And that's why we're saying, what is this? What do you mean, Nancy? Are you, are you, are you drunk again? Are you, are you drunk? Did you, did you play with too many arrows during the election? That's not, she knows that's not true. Now here's the trick with Nancy. With Nancy, the hard part with her is always going to be, is she intentionally lying or is she just having one of those times where her brain is melting and she doesn't really know what's going on and where she's at? So I don't know, like at this point though, I think she's just, She's full of lies anyway, so I think we just have to assume the worst. So when they ask about that PPP money, any possibility of releasing some of that money, she says it's up to the administration. It's not, it's not. That's CARES Act money that was designed for the PPP. That would have to go back and be voted on in the Congress. She says, and that's why we're saying, what is this? And plus, all the other money that Mr. Mnuchin has discretion over, that's for bigger business. But nonetheless, as the Fed has said, so much a part of our economy that that's why I referenced Sandy Hook. Forget about it. That's why I referenced George Floyd. Let's move on. People are suffering. And if you don't believe in government, then it's hard. It's easy for you to say we don't ha really have to do all of these things. And that's what the problem is. But I'm optimistic that we will have bipartisanship to put something together to go forward because I do believe that many of our colleagues understand what's happening in their districts and want to make a difference. That's her response. So does that make sense to anybody else? Am I the only one? Am I just going nuts here by myself? Let's break this down again. It says, just, I feel like I just have to hyper focus on this. And still, there's about 138 million that's allocated in PPP funds that's there, ready, available. Any possibility on releasing some of that money? Here's what she says. Well, that's up to the administration. No, it's not. And that's what we're saying. What is this? What do you mean? You're saying, what is this? Because you don't know what you're talking about or because you know you're lying. So you're just saying, well, they have money. So why are they helping the people? But I thought you've said repeatedly that Trump can't do executive orders and he can't do other things to help people because it has to all go through um, congressional votes. So which one is it, Nance? Is the, is, are the blowout chemicals getting to you yet? I'm so excited y'all taught me what a blowout is, by the way. Thank you. Much love to you guys. Also, the peanut gallery. Okay, two questions for y'all. Are the peanut gang and the peanut gallery the same thing? Some of y'all were talking about like howdy doody. Some of y'all were talking about what they call the peanut gallery, which is like a certain level of people. Or maybe not level, but like certain classes of people who watch things and this sort of thing or certain like, what is it called? Like divisions of a crowd, right? And then some of y'all were referencing Charlie Brown, which I was like, I think that's the peanut gang, but the peanut gang is different than the peanut gallery, right? Sound off in the comments and let me know. I love reading your guys' comments. You guys are so awesome. So anyways, yeah, let's look over this again. She's saying, what is this? And plus all the other money that Mr. Mnuchin has discretion over, that's for bigger business. But nonetheless, as the Fed has said, so much a part of our economy, and then she starts referencing Sandy Hook and George Floyd. What do any of those things have to do with you saying that the White House can do whatever they want with the PPP money? And then you're saying that Mr. Mnuchin has total discretion over this, that, or the other. Mnuchin has been really careful to always follow the laws that have been set in place. What he's doing with that money, he's following the laws of the CARES Act. So she lies. Let me just break this down. And I'm going to have another video. I'm going to go more into detail on this because I just don't have the time or the energy for her right now. This is where she says, well, that's up to the, the White House administration when it comes to where the PPP money goes. And that's what we're saying. What is this? And plus all the other money that Mr. Nushin has discretion over. 
That's for bigger business. But nonetheless, as the Fed has said, so much a part of our economy that, that what? That's why I referenced Sandy Hook. Why did you reference Sandy Hook, Fancy? Forget about it. That's why I referenced George Floyd. Let's move. What does George Floyd have to do with PPP money? Let's move on. People are suffering. If you don't believe in government, then it's hard. Well, why would we believe in government when we're seeing you lie and you're just all of a sudden stringing things together? You're like PPP money. Oh, forget about George Floyd. What are, uh, and PPP money? Well, Sandy Hook. What are you talking about? Like, no joke. Is she mal Are these robots malfunctioning? What is she talking about? So she says, um, it's easy for you to say we don't really have to do all of these things. Nobody's saying that, Nancy. You're saying nothing or everything I want. And that's what the problem is. But I'm optimistic we will have a bipartisan shift to put something together to go forward because I do believe that many of our colleagues understand what's happening in their districts and want to make a difference, except for you and the people that follow you, Nancy. Also, the people that follow Mitch. And what is it, like the 23, 24 senators who have vowed they're not going to do anything to help anybody when it comes to the stimulus. You know what? I'm not even I'm not even going to go to the rest. I know I played a little bit more of that. I'm going to save that for a whole other video because it's 24 minutes of hilarity. And I just want to be able to giggle at her because I'm so mad at these people that I think we deserve some giggles, don't you? We've been good this year. We've been more than good. We've been starving. We deserve some good old drunk dance giggles. So that's where we're at. Big old nothing burgers. I do want to say, guys, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and I did decide I think I'm going to put up a couple videos. I might do a stimulus video. One I know I'm going to do, I want it to be a personal video where I just kind of talk and connect with you guys and, and open up a little bit more. So be looking out for that. There will be a couple videos, and then I'm going to come back hard. Hopefully tomorrow, I'm going to be able to have my uh, my response to NAA Worldwide Films. Guys, it's you guys know that I confronted the CEO, the CEO, My Michael Anderson of NAA Worldwide. I confronted him in an interview. He tried to do bad mouthing me and it just spectacularly backfired. They even hyped up the interview. You can't go on the drama side of YouTube and lie about how YouTube works and think that people aren't going to figure it out. Oh, missteps on their part. I also have some funny NAA Worldwide updates. A lot of people coming out of the woodwork to talk to me. And there are a couple I've reached out to myself. Um, and I'm hearing across the board. And I'm going to protect people's privacy. But you know all these new people that came by. Guess what? Not getting paid. Didn't see this coming. And again, no disrespect to them. I feel bad for them. They probably thought this was a great opportunity that they were being sold by Michael Anderson, not having any clue what the situation was. And we're in a pandemic. People are desperate. I can't fault those. I feel bad for the kids. You know, they spent their energy not getting paid. So I, I feel bad for them. But I'll have some updates there. And the reason I haven't even begun to film it yet, guys, is because it's literally two hours long. So this will be a little mini series of me breaking down exactly what happened. But it's going to be fun. We're going to have some fun. This might be like a five part series of just an hour each. They told so many lies, I'm going to have to stop and start and really dive in and explain exactly what's happening. Just the way that they explain YouTube works at all is not possible. So it's pretty funny, but we'll go into that. Okay, guys, if you like this video, please help me out and give me a very big old nasty, what well, does that be nasty, but a big old thumbs up, like this video, subscribe, hit notifications so you can be notified what's coming to the pipeline for you and your stimulus money. Also, sound off in the comments. Y'all know I love to hear everything you guys have to say. And guys, please share this content with as many people as you know are struggling right now, people who are on unemployment, waiting for unemployment, stimulus checks, SB loan and grant issues, bill issues, everything in between. I got tons of tools and tons of resources to help you during this very difficult time. And guys, the more you like, subscribe, comment, hit notifications, share the content, the more my channel grows, the more my channel grows, the more things I can do for you. So for instance, we are giving away $100 gift cards. Very simple. This is all you have to do. Like every video you see, subscribe, hit notifications, comment, share the content, boom, you're entered, you're eligible. That's all you have to do. Do it for every video. And guys, the more comments you leave, the more chances you have of winning. So for instance, if you leave 100 comments, it's 100 times more chance you have to win a gift card. And I love it. It helps the channel grow. And I'm so grateful for that. And the more it grows, the more I can do for you guys. So yay. Good luck to everybody. Find me on Facebook, Katie's Insight. Like the page, join the group. Katie's Corner will be changed to Katie's Insight soon. We're helping people on a one-on-one -on -one basis find stimulus money in your area for free. We're just trying to all help one another. That's what we try to do on this channel. Okay, guys, I'm going to go take a little break and then I'm going to dive into some giggles with Nance and y'all. This has been Katie and thank you so much, guys, for listening to my insight on things. And until next time, take care, blessings, hugs, and kisses. Mwah. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.